ओम भद्रम करने भी सुनयाम देवा भद्रम पश्चिमाक्षभिर्यजत्रा स्थिरंगे स्तुष्टुआम सस्तनु भी व्यसेम देवहिदम यदायु सुस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्ध सवा सुस्ति न पूषा विश्ववेदा सुस्ति न स्ताक्षु अरिष्टनेमी सुस्ति नो ब्रह्मस्पदिर दधार ओम शांति 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 ओ अलमाइटी गॉड्स लेट्स बी केपेबल ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग सैक्रिफाइसेस एंड हियर ऑस्पिशियस साउंड्स विथ आवर इयर्स and see auspicious forms with our eyes, with strong and steady limbs and body and remaining ever prayerful, let us spend our God-given life directing our minds always to auspicious thoughts. Om peace, peace, peace. <coughs> now we are coming to a famous verse, 11th verse of third chapter. <clears throat> Before this, it was already shown that there is no change for the consciousness, for the Atman at any stage. Either at birth, existence, or death. And this was demonstrated with the help of an analogy, which which you which are called Ghadakasha and Makakasha in Sanskrit. I shall try to explain. If you have a pot or any vessel, then you feel that the space within the vessel has got a separate existence. It is different from the space outside that part. We feel that way because we feel that the space within the vessel is confined to the shape and the size of the vessel. So it is smaller in dimension. And the space outside is universal or pervading. So we feel these are two different things. And we sometimes believe that the space within the pot is a part of the space outside. The universal space is the whole and the space confined to the pot is a part. Or we feel, we may believe that the space, the smaller space confined to the pot is an evolute of the universal space. Some kind of distinction, difference, we may posit. Now, similarly, we may also believe that individual souls, individual jivas, are parts, and the universal consciousness, Brahman or Atman, is the whole. In fact, that is the belief of one school of Vedanta, which is known as the qualified non-dualistic school, the school of qualified non-dualism, technically called Visistha Advaita of Ramanuja Acharya. I shall just give a brief outline. There are three levels of evolution in Vedanta thought. At the lowest primitive level, Everything is different from everything else. God is different from all individual beings. And God is different from the whole universe. And universe is different from individual beings. And there is distinction and differences between or among different beings in this world. And there is also a difference and distinction between different living beings in the world, different jivas, different individual souls. So we are all different and everything is different from everything else. This is the beginning, the primitive stage of 
Vedanta, it is called dualism or you can say pluralism, the school of pluralism. In fact, most of the monotheistic religions, though they believe in one God, are dualistic or pluralistic so far as their approach towards different living beings in this world is concerned. They are essentially dualistic. Dualistic. They believe in monotheism, but monotheism is all right only in their conception of Godhead, in their understanding of the universe, and with regard to their interpretation of individual beings, they are not monotheistic. The monotheism itself implies belief in one God. But what about the universe? What about the different beings in this world? So, with regard to the universe and the living beings, they are essentially polytheistic and they are dualistic and pluralistic. And this school is known as Dvaita or dualism and its founder, its chief exponent was Madhvacharya who was born in the 12th century AD. And next in evolution was the school of Ramanuja, which is called qualified non-dualism. He was an, an elder contemporary of Madhvacharya. He lived a little earlier before Madhva. And he said that there is a relationship between God and the universe and also living beings in this universe. The universe and God have a relationship. The universe is a part, God is the whole. Similarly, the jiva's individual souls and God are related. Individual souls are parts and God is whole. And not only that, the individual souls and the universe are evolutes of the Godhead who is explained as having a definite form, a name and a number of attributes. It comes very close to Spinoza's conception of Godhead, more or less. But there is one difference. All the universal beings that you, I mean the whole universe is unconscious, devoid of consciousness. Only human beings have consciousness. That was Ramanuja's theory. This is called qualified non-dualism. It approaches non-dualism, but it is qualified, it is conditioned, it is modified. So technically called chit achit visishta means it, reality is one, it is non-dualism, but within the non-dualistic reality, the absolute reality, there are two entities, the conscious living beings, the individual souls, and the unconscious entities constituting the universe. And about 350 years before Ramanuja, the great Advaitic, Advaita teacher Shankaracharya emerged. He was the one who taught that the reality is one, the existence is one, God is beyond time, space and causation. The reality, the absolute reality transcends attributes, names and forms. It is one without a second. All these entities constituting the universe, they come and they go. They are subject to change. Therefore, they cannot be said to be eternal, but they are not non-existent. They are relative, and this is the relative. This relativity is sometimes called mithya or maya. Means everything that comes 
and goes. But behind this relative entities, there is that unchanging, unborn, eternal, deathless, immortal, absolute reality. Atman or Brahman. This Atman is immanent in all beings. It is also omnipresent, all-pervading. So it is immanent and also omnipresent. It is also transcendental. If you don't admit the transcendental dimension of the reality, then sometimes it could be interpreted as pantheism, which is not acceptable to Advaitis. This is the idea behind. Now, Swami Vivekananda, in a classic statement, said, we are all traveling from, from uh, dualism towards non-dualism, and there is a point in between that is qualified non-dualism. This is true with regard to our understanding of God, our concept, our concept of the absolute reality, and our own spiritual evolution. Evolution from many towards one. Evolution from gross to subtle. Evolution from without towards within. This is the idea behind. So, uh, in the in this uh, in the eighth verse, Gaudapada, the author established the fact that those who believe that the dualistic absolute reality are like children who believe that the sky gets dirty and filthy. If there is cloud, dark cloud in the sky, the sky appears to have become black because children don't understand that sky remains space as a space rather. The space remains intact. It cannot be uh, tainted. It cannot be, it cannot become dirty. Uh, clouds come and go, but the space remains untouched, unaffected. That's why yatha bhavadi balanam gaganam malinai malinam malaihi tatha bhavadi abuddhanam atma api maline amalai. See, this is the idea behind. Now we are coming to, and then the ninth verse, it was already established that this atman, this consciousness, this supreme reality is the same in all living beings. It is never born. Why? Because it, does, it, it exists all the time. Birth signifies the transition from a state of uh, absence to a state of existence. From a state of non-existence to a state of existence. It's called birth. This Atman is never born because it always exists. Therefore, it always exists remains the same without change it is eternal now <clears throat> and again in the in the tenth verse it was already established that all these psychophysical mechanisms all these distinctions and differences are all true only so long as we are in a state of Ignorance of the supreme reality. Well, this may appear to be a bit uh, incomprehensible for beginners. Now, uh, suppose you have innumerable vessels, pots and pans made of clay sitting in front of you. If you are, if you, we are even intellectually evolved, we, we will know very well that they are all clay only. So what about these names and forms? Pot has got a huge shape and size and a different name and a glass made of the same clay of which the pot is made has got a smaller size and different name. Now, a pot maker who actually manufactures all these vessels from clay, will certainly understand that all, after all they are all made of clay. 
they are all clay only but suppose people do not understand that everything all these vessels are made of the same uh, material cause clay they will think well the the pot remains different from the smaller vessel which though both are made of the same clay so these distinction distinctions are or like dream dream experiences are real for the dreamer when the dreamer wakes up and returns to the waking state he suddenly realizes dream experiences are after all dreams only they have no existence in waking state similarly when a spiritual seeker realizes that there is only one absolute reality and that is the supreme consciousness the atman at that moment the supreme real, absolute reality which is unchanging at that moment the spiritually evolved person realizes that all the earlier understanding consumptions ideas related to ignorance were all unreal in reality the supreme consciousness atman is the is the only reality now in the 11th this is much we have already explained so i am i no need to go into details now we are coming to 11th verse which we have not discussed that's what we are going to discuss in today's class because other classes we have already discussed earlier now we will come to the verse number 11 because it is very important if you you won't be able to fully understand if you read the translation so it needs some additional discussion rasadyohi ye koshah vyakhyada staitiriyaki tesham atma paru jeeva kham yatha samprakashita this is the 11th verse this verse has gone one problem in through this verse Uh, gaudapada refers to a topic discussed in another upanishad in the taittiriya upanishad i will come to that so first we will go to the prose order taittiriya ke means in taittiriya upanishad rasadeha ye kosha ka vyakhya daha hi tesham kham yatha samprakashita para atma jeeva now i already explained the beginning that altogether we have right now the knowledge of 240 upanishads belonging to the four vedas rigveda yajurveda samaveda atharveda the original sanskrit text of all these 240 upanishads are not available now so we don't know that all these upanishads are equally ancient or antique but around 160 upanishads are available with their full sanskrit text some of them are not as ancient as the upanishad that we are dealing with the mandukya upanishad or the bhrigadarani upanishad some of these upanishads belong to later centuries now of these 160 36 upanishads are well known because in one upanishad there is a discussion there is a dialogue between sri rama and a great devotee in that upanishad in that text vedic text sri rama was a great spiritual personality of ancient times in india he gives a list of 36 upanishads so these 36 upanishads are certainly authentic of these 36 10 upanishads are most important of these 36 upanishads which are authentic 10 upanishads are most important in fact they constitute the very foundation of upanishadic metaphysics and upanishadic philosophy and taittiriya upanishad is one of the 10 upanishads which have become famous and important because they were commented upon and explained by the great shankaracharya who lived 
between 788 and 820 or 778 or 810. He lived only for 32 years. So these 10 Upanishads are famous and they are supposed to be the original texts upon which Vedanta philosophy, the non-dualistic philosophy is built. They constitute the very foundation on which Vedanta philosophy with Swami Vivekananda preached in the West is built. Taittiri Upanishad is one of those ten Upanishads. Isha Kena Katha Prasna Munda Taittiriya Aranyaga Aitiriya Chandugya Brihida Aranyaga like that. These are ten Upanishads of which Taittiriya Upanishad is one of the ten important Upanishads as important as the Mundaka Upanishad. Of which this Gaudapada Kariga is a commentary. Now Gaudapada is referring to one such Upanishad, that is Taittiriya Upanishad. In this Taittiriya Upanishad, there is an important chapter in which there is a description of Atman. It is called Pancha Kosha Vishakalana or Pancha Kosha Vivarana. That is, the Upanishad explains, the Upanishad says that this absolute reality is the inner core, is the essence of everything. It is the supreme reality. And in this context, the Taittiriya Upanishad expounds the identity of the individual soul and the cosmic universal soul. In reality, they are the same. In fact, in support of this idea, Gaudapada will refer to another Upanishad, Brihudarani Upanishad, which is supposed to be the most important in terms of metaphysical and spiritual content and also the largest by sheer size. That Brihadarani Upanishad is also referred to in the 11th verse. So, Rasadayohi ye koshah vyakhyadah taitri taitriye taitriye ki tesham atma paro jiva kham yatha Sam Prakashita. This is the verse here, 11th verse. Now, Taittiri again means Taittiriya Upanishad. There, five koshas, sheets are mentioned. Which is called Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha and Ananda Maya Kosha. Now, they are, see, one within the other. <coughs> it is so, Anandamaya Kosha is the first sheath, the outermost sheath. If you have got a fruit or something, then on the, ext on the outer part, there is a hard shell. It is the grossest dimension. Annam actually means matter that comes and goes. Annam atiri means that which is consumed. Literally means eaten up, consumed by time. Everything in this world, the entire material universe, is food for the almighty time. Because they come in time, they exist in time, and they vanish in time. So time is a huge canvas in which everything in this world, every material entity in this world comes into existence, exists for some time and vanish. So these triple dimensions, three points, past, present and future, they constitute time. Anything that you see, anything that you smell anything that you touch that you hear 
any anything in this world that you cognize that you pursue with the help of mind and any of the five senses like sense of touch sense of vision etc all these things come into existence in time exist in time and remember vanish in time that is very important means because time consumes time eats up all this now this is the grossest dimension the physical so this atma is is clothed by five sheets kosha I mean sheet and there are five koshas that that's called first that's called the physical the material what you see what you hear what you touch anything that you pursue by seeing by hearing by touching by smelling by tasting that's material that's the grossest dimension it's the hard outer shell of the fruit so that is physical now <clears throat> within the physical there is something which is less gross more subtle less gross than the physical more subtle than the physical but that is not the subtlest the subtlest is atman the subtlest or the um, i mean the what's called sukshma tamam in sanskrit is called the innermost sheath is anandamaya kosha that is of the nature of bliss anandamaya kosha is not atman but it stands closest to atman because what is the one sign of spiritual evolution one sign of spiritual evolution is blissfulness it is not satisfaction satisfaction is very very gross by nature you struggle to get something you get it you get satisfied but it is only one side of the coin the other side of the coin is dissatisfaction when you lose it because anything in this world that you get by hard work is the effect of the work work is the cause karanam and effect is the karya the effect work and its result so anything that is that is in the form of a result an effect is a result of a of work will stay for some time but will lose it you will lose it one day so it gives you satisfaction but it is just one side of the coin the other side is dissatisfaction so happiness and unhappiness before you get it you struggle hard to get it so that is associated with unhappiness anxiety effort labor and then when you get it we are very much concerned that we should never lose it so we are anxious to preserve it that anxiety is also is an expression of unhappiness there both anxiety and unhappiness are, they go together because anxiety neurosis is not is not a very happy experience any more than depression and then when you lose it then of course it is certainly unhappiness so before you get you as you struggle hard to get something so much of hard work anxiety you are not sure you will get it so it is unhappiness when you get it then you are anxious not to lose it that also is unhappiness and when you really lose it 
then also unhappiness and anything that you gain has to has has to go vanish one day because anything in this world which is of gross nature which is physical nature comes and goes change is their uh, their uh, essential nature one example uh, cited by a great philosopher no less a philosopher than the greatest of them shankaracharya in one of his bhashya says you know one sign that we are all deluded by our own mind one one important sign that we are all within maya maya means a kind of self delusion is the is the fact that we always forget that there is that there is such a thing as death death is if there is anything in this world which we are we can be certain of it is death but in all our efforts in all our ambitions in all the activities there is always a sign of forgetfulness of this supreme truth because a psychologist psychologists argue one can never go out of the way to get something material in this world unless for a split moment he comes under the delusion he or she comes under the delusion that it is eternal one goes out of the way plays false games to acquire wealth and money he may be well educated man so he is not unaware of the fact that money won't stay long the banks may collapse still while making an effort to acquire money for a split second the person may forget that money is not eternal so similarly the one thing that we always forget is that death is a reality so if you even if you visit a museum showing the the, the exhibits of ancient egypt mummies dead bodies of people who died kings pharaohs emperors who died maybe 4000 years back or 5000 years back I mean 3 3000 bc or 2000 bc even when we see that it reminds us of two things one the death is certain second death is something related to body so there is something beyond this body which death cannot touch which is immortal which is atman so in fact the grossest dimension of human personality is the physical that is called, that is annamaya kosha guda pada in the 11th verse refers to when important uh, very very important section of the taittiriya upanishad in which the reality of atman the unity of the individual and the cosmic atman the oneness is explained with the help of an illustration is called pancha kosha vivarana or pancha kosha vishakara means the description of the five sheets so rasante yakashi tasma edasma annarasamaya anyaha anya antara atma prana pranamayaha then tasma edasma pranamaya anyaha antara atma manomayaha then tasma edasma manomaya anya antara atma vijnanamayaha tasma edasma vijnanamaya anyaha antara atma anantamayaha like that beyond this different from this physical is the vital energy prana means vital energy vital air and beyond this and within all this vital air energy is mind and beyond the mind is the intellect and beyond the mind and within the intellect beyond the intellect within the intellect is ananda ya ananta maya this is need some next description so we have first uh, dealt with the the grossest the most external dimension of human personality the physical 
what you call annamaya kosha, the outermost sheath of human personality. The second one is pranamaya kosha. Prana can be translated into energy. And as we evolve further and further, our understanding of our own personality, our understanding of the world, our understanding of the absolute reality also evolves. So those who are well educated may be deluded into thinking maybe at, at some times, not all the time, that the ex, this external world and all these things related to the physical are eternal. But those who have gone deeper into philosophy, those who have gone deeper into the field of introspection, may believe, well, all these physical things are obviously non-eternal. They are subject to change. Destruction also is change, you know. Destruction, what is destruction? Destruction is nothing but a change from the visible to the non-visible. The change from the state of existence to the state of non-existence. So destruction also is nothing but a form of change. So those who go beyond the physical may think that there is something subtler than the physical, energy, that is all pervading. So everything in this world is a manifestation, is a, form, is a formation of energy. Energy remains the same. So that is the next level of spiritual and intellectual and philosophical evolution. <clears throat> but energy also cannot be eternal. Because who pursues this energy, who feels the presence of this energy? It is mind. So there is something beyond, beyond the physical Beyond the vital, means later vital energy. What is that? It is a mental, the mind. So, manomaya kosha. So, now, we have to remember that the physical is the outermost dimension of human personality, the outermost shell of the, of, of the entity. And within that, is the pranamaya kosha, the sheath of energy, the sheath of vital air. The physical is filled with the vital energy. And now within the energy, within the human personality of energy, or rather within the energy dimension of human personality. There is a higher, a subtler and a deeper dimension, that is mental. It is within the, the energy dimension of human personality. Now at the mental level, we are not sure because one sign of, I mean, one definition of mind in Vedanta is Sankalpa Vigalpatmika Antakarna Vurtihimana. Mind is that form of human tendencies and impressions which function as positive and negative thought currents. Modern psychologists also sometimes define mind as stream consciousness, an endless flow of consciousness. Con not supreme art consciousness, which is often the English translation of Atman. No, what what is meant by mind defined as energy as stream consciousness is this stream of thought currents, an endless stream of thought currents. That's what is meant here. So it is still far away from the true personality, the true dimension of human personality. So beyond the mental and within the mental and closer to the reality, the Atman, is the intellectual. We call it Vijnana Maya Kosha. 
that is the intellect dimension of personality, the intellectual dimension we may call. At this level, a spiritual seeker becomes intellectually sure about the reality of Atman, the reality, the eternal nature of Supreme Consciousness. And his mind is away from the mundane, the physical, the gross dimension. He is, he is sure about the path to follow and he starts evolving to a higher level. Now, beyond this intellectual and within the intellectual is the Anandamaya Kosha. Ananda here means bliss. It is not Ananda Surupa. I mean, means in an, when you reach, when we reach the Ananda Maya Kosha dimension of spiritual evolution, we will have a different experience. I already mentioned earlier at the beginning that whatever physical we achieve, whatever may be, if it is physical, it is always associated with happiness and also unhappiness. Every gain is inseparably related to loss. But when we reach this Anandamaya Kosha, the Anandamaya dimension of personality, we get the feeling of absolute bliss. We get the feeling that we have reached somewhere beyond which there is nothing to aim at, nothing to strive for. There is no further, uh, there is no need to continue the journey. That state of experience is sometimes associated with the great mystics of all religious and spiritual traditions all over the world. In Vedantic tradition, there is a well-established vocabulary and technical terms used to explain this, this experience. And there, there, have been, there may be hundreds of such great mystics, but you can find in the lives of great spiritual personalities in all religious traditions. So maybe the God-intoxicated man is Spinoza, you know, he was a humble man, live as an ordinary person. Sometimes you find great women saints also lived ordinary lives, but they had a, an experience which they expressed in their life. This is called blissfulness. In Vedanta, this state is an expression of our higher evolution. Anandamaya Kosha is not Atman, but it's that experience, that feeling of blissfulness, which is inexplicable, is very close to the reality itself because that experience comes only when we evolve and reach very close to the supreme goal of spiritual evolution. That's what uh, Godapada is referring to in the 11th verse. Rasad yohi ye koshyaha vyakhyadaha taitiriye ke. Taitiriya Upanishad, that's mean. Taitiriya means Taitiriya Upanishad. So, so in the Taitiriya Upanishad, there is a description of the spiritual growth through five stages. That is the physical dimension, the energy dimension of the vital, the mental, the intellectual, and ultimately this the the ananda means the bliss experience. Then one sign of spiritual evolution is a person gets a feeling that there is not that he has reached somewhere, he has attained somewhere beyond which there is nothing more to be attained. That is a sign of spiritual progress that is mentioned here. 
Now we will come to the next verse. In the next verse also there is a reference to another Upanishad that we will discuss maybe not today, tomorrow. Now next one, twelfth verse. Doyor doyor mathukyani param brahma prakashidaha prithivyam udare chaiva ithakasha prakashidaha So that is the next next verse that is twelfth one. Now, <coughs> the, the prose order is Yatha Prithivyam Prithivyam Udhari Evacha Akashaka Prakashidaka Tatha Mathukyani Doyohu Doyohu Param Brahma Prakashitam. Now, here Mathu Brahmanam. Mathu Jnanam actually is Madhu Vidya. Madhu Vidya is, is an important topic in the Brihadaranika Upanishad. It is explained in one important section of the Upanishad called Madhu, Brah, Madhu Brahmanam. Mathu literally means honey. But actually here it means immortality or Completeness, wholeness. And immortality signifies the experience which makes us immortal. Because when we experience that we are not the physical or the mental or the intellectual, we are something beyond all this. The physical, mental, intellectual, they come and go but the spiritual, the reality, the supreme reality is immortal. So, when we realize that we are that immortal Brahman, we also become immortal. Attainment of the immortal bliss. That is explained in the Brihadaranika Upanishad in a particular section known as Madhu Brahmanam. And that particular... Um, technique. It is also a kind of spiritual practice. The method is called Madhu Vidya. We will describe, we will explain this in the next class. Now we will conclude. We have about five, five, six minutes. If you have got anything to ask, you can ask. Otherwise, we will conclude. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a qualitative difference because Rama, in Ramanuja philosophy, there is a relationship between the jivas and the different entities in the world and God. So, at the same time, there is a relationship also. The relationship is there because the jivas and the jagat, mean universe, constitute the part and God is the whole. So there is a, an element of uh, non-dualism relationship. But there is a distinction because they are parts and, are, and God is whole. So there is a distinction but also there is an element of non-difference. Jivas are different because they are at different levels of spiritual evolution. But at the same time, again, there is an element of non-difference because they all constitute a part of the, of, of the whole, I mean the God himself. So, that similarly, the same relationship exists between God and different entities in the world also. But in, in Madhva system, where they accept Pancha Bheda Siddhanta, I mean the doctrine of five differences, if you can think of a triangle, and if you put God on the top, and both sides, universe and individual beings, then you can think of five differences. There is a difference between God and the world, 
world and individual beings and individual beings and God and there is difference between I mean among the individual beings and there's a difference among different entities in the world so that is not acceptable to Ramanuja so Ramanuja's Ramanuja system stands somewhere between the extreme form of dualism of Madhva and the absolute non-dualism of Shankaracharya, which is called Kevala Advaita. Yes, please. Yeah, in fact, you reach an experience where you feel death is not the end of your real I. So, if we feel we are this body, then death is the end of everything. But the moment we experience we are something beyond this, the I is something beyond this body, then we become immortal. Death is no more seen as something to be scared about. or It is not the end of the journey, end of the road. Now, in Vedanta, whatever little spiritual practice we do, we practice, will have its effect, positive effect on our future lives. But, this cycle of transmigratory existence comes to an end once for all the moment we realize that we are something other than the physical body, the psychophysical mechanism. And that we realize when we realize that we are the immortal consciousness, the Atman. And for such person, death is not at all a problem. It is, it is just like, for them it is nothing at all. So, as we spiritually evolve, progress further and further, our understanding of what we are also evolves. That's what happens. As for ancestors, you mentioned something about your ancestors, in the first part of the question? Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm... Of course. Yes, yes, yes. And it's not a common point of view, it's not real. Yes. But as I identify more with my consciousness, which which appears like the Atman, um, there is also Brahman. Yeah. So hopefully I make progress. Yes, that's true, that's true. Yes, that's right, that's right. Yes. So now we will conclude. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti